All right, Holly, you ready? Holly. <laughs> Holly. Holly says she's focused on one thing this morning, and that is getting outside to start working on this farm. But Holly, we got big news to tell everybody today. All right, we'll get started, and then we can tell everybody. Come on, let's go. What is happening, Cog Squad? It's Jason over here at Cog Hill Farm. Hey guys, honestly, there's only one video that I can think of that I would interrupt the fence building process to make. And that is this video right here. Because this is breaking news here on the farm. And I think a lot of us might be shocked. So most of you guys know Holly's backstory. But if you don't, long story short, we adopted Holly from a lady who had fallen and broken her back and could no longer take care of Holly. The special thing about Holly was we were not looking for another dog at all. Brooke just, it just popped up on Brooke's Facebook feed. We didn't know the lady, but we ended up going over there, fell in love with Holly, and we adopted Holly around Christmas of last year. Hey, Tuck Tuck, I'm talking about Holly. Okay, that's how Holly came to our farm. Now you guys know, uh, here recently, we did a DNA test on Holly and we've been waiting for the results to come back because so many of you guys said that Holly was not what the owner told us she was, which didn't matter at all to us. The owner told us that Holly was an Australian Shepherd and that she knew the person very well that had Holly when she was a puppy or had the mother and daddy to Holly. And Holly was an Australian Shepherd. So many of you, including myself, started wondering about that, especially after you guys said y'all thought Holly was a Border Collie. And when you look at pictures of a Border Collie, it looks a lot like Holly. And that's why we ended up doing a DNA test because we thought it would be fun and we thought we could finally figure out what Holly was and that is if these DNA tests are accurate. Well, we got the results back yesterday and I can't wait to share you guys as to what those results said. And I'm thinking a lot of you guys might be a little shocked when you see the results. <laughs> But regardless, this is my best buddy out here on the farm. She is by my side literally 24-7. If she's out of my sights because she's playing with the boys. But other than that, she's my shadow. And I literally mean she's my shadow. But I would not have it any other way. That's right, girl. <laughs> oh my gracious. Hey, honeymooners. Guess what? I know, Loretta. Guess what? Holly's results are in. And are you guys ready for this? Huh? Well, we're fixing to tell everybody what they are. And I think one of you guys is going to be a little shocked. <laughs> Most of you probably already know. We've already done one of these DNA tests, and we did it with... The boys are two rescue pups. Y'all know Rocky and Bandit. And of course Rocky who had Parvo. And that we pretty much, pretty much saved. Uh, Rocky was really, really bad off. We didn't know what these guys were. Uh, I had a hunch. And my hunch is still there. Especially Bandit. Now the results came back with them. They were all over the place all over the place i mean it showed they had boxer in them great pyrenees uh american bulldog bandit was also classified as a super mutt and i can't remember what else it showed but they had all kind of different dog breeds in there except the one that i think they have the most of and i think especially bandit that they are anatolian shepherds or have a lot of an anatolian shepherd in them of course, y'all see Bandit's wet, as always. But he has the perfect characteristics 
of an Anatolian. His face, his body shape, his size, his color, his tail's down right now, but most of the time his tail is curled. I mean, he really looks like an Anatolian shepherd. Uh, he looks like, almost like a full-blooded Anatolian shepherd to me. Uh, his thick, I mean, even his, his, the way he's built, how he's kind of slender, very athletic looking. He's not near as athletic as Holly, but, I mean, that's just what he reminds me of, is an Anatolian shepherd. I mean, look at him. Now, Rocky, on the other hand, who is his brother, doesn't, I mean, he's got the colors as an Anatolian but Rocky, to me, kind of leans more towards more Great Pyrenees, or may have more Great Pyrenees in him than Bandit. But Rocky definitely does not look like a 100% Anatolian Shepherd like his brother does. And these dogs are two totally different dogs. You can see Rocky does not care for water. And Bandit, who's playing with Tuk Tuk, it's almost always wet. He stays in the water. I don't know how many times he gets in the pond or goes down to the stream, but he stays in water. Also, Bandit is a lot more alert. You can see him right then. He just stays alert all the time. He does this stance right here where he sits and just watches and listens real closely. And to me, he's a little bit more active. Then his brother Rocky, who tends to just kind of lay around a lot more. Uh, you just don't see Rocky as much as you do Bandit, which kind of reminds me of Foxy. Foxy is a Great Pyrenees mix, and you don't see her as much. To me, she's not as active during the day. Now, at nighttime, it's a different story. Now, granted, these guys are only around nine months old, so they're not mature yet. So, Rocky may end up being... Uh, just as vocal and as much of a guard dog as the rest of them. But regardless, we love Rocky to death. And it could have something to do with him being so sick when he was a very, very young pup. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Again, their DNA test was all over the place, and it never listed Anatolian Shepherd. So that made me feel that maybe these DNA tests aren't extremely accurate. But then we got Holly's back. y'all <laughs> I mean you know there were some indicators to me that made me think she was an Austrian Shepherd number one the owner was just so confident about it there was no she never once said border collie ever uh, the other thing was is there were two features on her that made me think it as well she's actually tri-colored she's white brown and she's got bronze in her or a light brown color in her and from my research typically border collies only have two colors and tricolors are extremely, extremely rare. Also the color of Holly's eyes, they're that bronzy color. Um, again, that's something that's more rare on a border collie, but it does happen. I think the reason why she looks so much like a border collie, and this is kind of the opposite of what I just said, is her color. She has that border collie color. I think most of us think of that brindle color when it comes to an Australian Shepherd and usually has that little blue or gray in it, which Holly has none of. Also, Holly's tail. Uh, Holly's tail wasn't docked when she was a baby. No, it wasn't, was it, girl? Yeah. So she has a long tail, which a lot of Border Collie's tails aren't docked. So that also gives her that Border Collie look. And 
her size. Now Holly is starting to get a little bit thicker, but when you see Australian Shepherd, they're usually kind of thick and not as slender as a Border Collie. And Holly has that Border Collie weight size, but Holly is starting, she just lay down on me. Holly is starting to get a little bit thicker um, as she's getting older. You know, Holly wasn't very old when we got her. She was really a puppy. And when I see old footage of her, you know, even three months ago, I can really tell how, she's, how much of a puppy she was then, you know, versus the way she is now. But regardless, I love this puppy here to death. Yeah, I do. Well, since we got the results back of Holly, um, I think this can only mean one thing. We gotta take her on a little trip to somewhere special. You ready to go, Holly? She's going. <laughs> She's on her way without us. Y'all wait till you see this. <laughs> hey, Holly. Hey, you ready? You ready to go on your little special trip? Hmm? Your little surprise? You wait till you see where we're going. You'll never guess in a million years. Never. We get through with Holly's surprise, we do have to get back to the farm and start our fall garden seeds today because we can't wait any later. You help me? I'll help you. Good. You just tell me what to do. I'll do it. And I know Holly's going to help. I mean, Holly always helps. You think Holly's going to be surprised about her surprise visit? She ought to be. I think that the COG squad here is going to be super surprised where we're going as well. <laughs> Well, it's a little bit of a travel to get there. <laughs> it's not like we just go to this nearest city yet. No, but this is funny. It's funny and it's fun. And it's fun. And she will enjoy it. No doubt. And we will too, watching her. <laughs> Holly got her results back. She was pretty much 80% Australian Shepherd, 15% Australian Cattle Dog, 5% Border Collie. There was only one place I could take her today that made any sense whatsoever. The Outback Steakhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Holly. Get ready, girl. Yeah, I know technically Australian Shepherds are not from Australia, but I mean, it's still, I mean, this is, where else can you take her, right? <laughs> right here in the shade. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Are you ready for your, your, uh, your big surprise? You want your water first? <laughs> oh my goodness. Guess what? What? It's a good thing she's not a human. Because <laughs> it's little bitty. No silverware. Oh. Holly, you have a special surprise. Oh my gracious. Look, Look at that. Look at there. She's catching a drift of it in the wind. She's just excited to be here. I'm just happy to be here, girl. Let's see if I can't pull it apart. Oh, you're in my lap. She's you are awesome. worthy of this. I reckon you can bite it. <coughs> she said, I reckon I can just take the whole thing. Pull, Holly, pull. pull. It's a tug of war. Well, Holly, we are so happy that you're here in our family. Yeah. Holly, I hope that was fun, and I hope you guys enjoyed that and had a good laugh and a smile as we did i think i did <laughs> that was fun that was fun all right holly you ready to go back to the farm let's go yep we got to start our seeds today for our fall garden so holly let's get on back to the farm and get our fall garden seeds started we are in the greenhouse and that means we are getting ready to start our fall and winter garden for the year now y'all, this has been one of the craziest, I will say this, this has been the craziest weather year that I can ever remember when it comes to gardening. I've been gardening, gosh, 20 plus years now, 
and I've never seen a season like this. The, the long sustained 100 degree plus weather that lasted three months it seems like. The, the lack of rain and you know the, 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 the flash freeze and the late freeze on top of that earlier in the season. So I mean it's been it's been one crazy weather season for us. Typically I start my fall garden seeds the middle of August. And here it is almost the end of September. It's just been too hot. It's just been way too hot for me to start my fall garden seeds. Technically, I probably should have done this last week, but life happens and I was unable to. So I'm gonna get it done today. I'm doing a different approach this year on our fall garden versus what we've done in the past. I'm not growing as many varieties this year. I am growing a couple of new things that I've never done before, but I am growing strictly stuff this year that I know that I'm good at growing and it's not that many different varieties. It's stuff that I know we love and eat. It's not an experimental year this year. I've been overwhelmed the past two gardening seasons or two gardening cycles and it's just because we've had so much going on with the house build and the barn and now we got the pastures and now we're going to start working on the potager garden or the backyard garden once this gets finished and then finish the rose garden so i don't want to be overwhelmed with this humongous crazy winter garden that is just going to overwhelm me and then end up i'm not going to take care of it like i need to so a totally different way that I normally garden this year. Uh, as time progresses and this new property is kind of where it needs to be, uh, then I can get back to growing a super large garden. And it's still going to be a large garden, but a larger garden with different things in it. But until then, this is what we're doing this year. And honestly, the things that I'm growing are super easy uh, with an exception to to possibly carrots. I've always grown carrots easily. The carrots I tried to go last year did not do well. And I think it's because of my compacted soil. So I'm gonna give carrots another shot. But other than that, everything I'm growing is extremely easy to grow. Now I'm in zone 8A, and this is what I'm doing for my area. So always check with your zones and see what zone you're located in because it may be too late for you to plant now or it may be too early for you to plant now. So the things that we're growing this year are stuff that I know that are almost bulletproof. Number one is all top turnip greens. This is a turnip green that we eat the tops off of versus the root. This thing will, it will sprout. It's gonna germinate easy. And it's going to do well unless you get super, super, super cold weather, which we experienced one day last year. I mean, it shows a 97% germination rate. These things are so easy to grow. Number two is a top chop collard or collard green. Now, we've grown top bunch collard green the last few years. Hoss was actually out of stock of the top bunch. This is a new one that they have that has great reviews on it. I'm sure it is just as easy as the other ones. Collard greens are very easy to grow. Germination rate on this one's 92%, so I don't think we're gonna have any issues with this variety. Green Magic Broccoli. This is the really the only broccoli I like to grow. I tried the Goliath last year, but again, that crazy freeze we had killed off all my broccoli last year. So I'm sticking to my tried and true, which is Green Magic Broccoli. This one's so easy to grow for us here in the south. Uh, generally, we'll have some hot days and broccoli will tend to bolt. This broccoli is a slow bolting variety that does well in our climate. Premium green mix, I rave about this every single year. You can grow this anywhere. Raised bed gardens, in your green stalk planter, in the ground, in a pot. You just spread it out. Now this one I will direct seed. The ones I just showed you, I'm going to start in seed trays. But this one, you just plant just a huge thick mass and it's a cut and come back. You'll cut the greens when you want it. 
and then a couple of days later you'll have new greens to cut again i love this premium green mix again extremely easy to grow these are the two carrots i love growing the purple elite simply because it's super cool and mirror crawl loves the purple carrots growing the purple elite and this is my favorite carrot hall sales it is called the envy carrot this carrot is extremely sweet and from little cog i had no issues growing this carrot whatsoever it made beautiful beautiful medium carrots and i don't thin my carrots out and i loved this carrot by far my favorite carrot because of its growth habit and its flavor now on to some varieties that i've never grown before i've never grown this ruby fresh baby swiss chard i've grown swiss chard in the past but i've never grown this particular one and it just caught my eye and i'm excited about this one we love greens as you guys can see we love stir fry and we just love greens period and i'm excited about using this one this year another new green that i'm growing that i've never grown before and that is savannah mustard this right here is almost bulletproof if you're a mustard fan then i would definitely recommend this one it's a 97 percent germination rate and this is great for bad nematodes in your soil helps with that as well and i am a mustard fan so i'm excited to grow this one this year another new one for me this year and i've grown radishes in the past i am going to try the champion radish this is one that i'm going to do succession plantings throughout the season radishes again is one of those things that anybody can grow so far everything i've shown you guys besides the carrots are very 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 easy beginner gardener friendly and the champion radishes or radishes in general are no exception super super easy and you can grow these throughout the fall and winter seasons and y'all listen 25 days and these guys are ready after you plant them that's crazy so basically a little over three weeks and you can have fresh radishes so you can succession plant these guys plant your row wait a week wait two weeks plant you another row and you'll have radishes all season long and they make a great cover crop speaking of cover crop there is one cover crop that i do plan on planting this year hoss was just actually out of it at the time but they're going to send it to me once it comes in that is tillage radishes or daikon radishes they're the radishes that get really big and they're perfect for compacted soil like we have here because they're going to grow deep break up that subsoil for us and then let them compost back in the ground or you can actually eat them and they're very delicious really 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 mild flavor radish all right y'all if you've never seen me do this before number one i always use a great seed starting mix when i start my seeds i've had way better success using a great seed starting mix like this hoss one right here versus using regular potting soil um, now again y'all hear me preach this all the time always do the best you can okay so if potting soil or making your own seed starting mix which you can make and generally uh general seed starting mix is a one to one to one ratio of peat or coconut uh, core vermiculite and perlite a one to one to one ratio so you put one part peat one part vermiculite and one part perlite and you can have your own seed starting mix and those things are very very nowadays are very easy to find but i like i really love this house mix because it has a lot of other things in it that are great for seedlings plus it's extremely fine it's been it's been sifted and filtered out so there's no big sticks or clumps or anything like that and that just makes it easier for your seeds to germinate but always do the best you can with what you got so what I like to do before I put this mix in my seed trays is I like to pre-moisten the soil because generally your potting soils or your seed starting mixes like this will repel water at first. It takes a little bit to get moist. And I don't have to worry about the seed 
floating out or moving over to the next seed cell or seed tray cell if I direct water it um, after I just barely put the seeds in there. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. And as always, if you guys are interested in anything that you see me working with today, the seeds, seed trays, seed starting mix, you can get that from Hoss Tools. And if you use our link, we'll get a small commission at no extra cost to you guys. And it does help our farm out tremendously. And that link will be down below, or you can always go to our website, www.coghillfarm.com, and you can find it there as well, as well as any of our links. I think this is going to be plenty right here. So let's go on and get it moistened real quick. So I got my lovely assistant with me, Miss <laughs> Brooke, and she's gonna help me put the seeds in the trays. And the seeds are very small. They're not gonna be deep, you know, a quarter of an inch or less. Uh, we made little divots in, in the soil. Then we're just gonna drop a seed in there. And then what I like to do is come back and cover it with perlite, but you don't have to do that. You can cover it with your seed starting to mix, you can cover it with peat moss, you can cover it with vermiculite. I just like to do perlite because that's what the big commercial growers do. And if it works for them, then um, it, it, I think it's uh, a good reason why they do it. So main thing is, is that it allows for the, the germination to pop on up pretty quick and it helps with dampening off, which is the uh, disease that seedlings can get when they first come up. Let's see here. Give me an easy one to start Give with. I gotta one. get in the in Listen the right field. Here. Swiss chard. Are we doing a whole tray? I think we're I gonna do a whole tray. It should okay. be enough. Well, it's think 200 it, seeds. Yeah. And so. it's 100 in one of these cells. So, so we'll we're have good. 100 seeds left there. Mm -hmm. And I'm not worried about pushing the seed in. I'm just sitting it right on top. Just sitting it right on top. In my divot. Yep. And always make a label. Don't try to remember. Been there and done that. And look, if you get more than one seed in the hole, it's no big deal. You can either leave it like that, or when the seeds germinate, you can pull up the weakest of the bunch. You know, while I'm not necessarily a gardener, yeah, I help you and I do what you tell me to, uh -huh. but there is something satisfying about starting your own seeds. It is. And realizing that you created this versus somebody else. And, and I think it's a little intimidating at first but it's really not it is really really easy and it's really rewarding yeah and once you realize that you can buy a pack of 100 or 200 seeds for less than five dollars a pack generally Which is less than one plant yeah that's what i'm six to say then you go to one of your stores and buy one plant and they're five six seven dollars a piece you can see the difference in how much money you'll save by starting your own seeds. And plus you get exactly what you want versus yep, you're something that you may or may not You're not limited, to have. right. You're not limited on varieties. The varieties are endless. I hear holly up under here. Well, I thought earlier when you, people were gonna think when you said my lovely assistant, so they were going to think Holly was your assistant. I hear Holly. I think her belly's full. You think? Mm-hmm. All right, now I'm going to cover my seedlings up with perlite, and then I'm going to lightly spray it in because I don't want the seeds to float up, and we're done.
So from this point forward, there's two things that you need to do to keep your seeds going. Number one, they need light. So I'm in a greenhouse, so mine I have sunlight all the time. If you're doing it inside, um, I know a lot of people try to grow them by a window. I don't like that method. I have a method that you can use by using a cheap LED shop light. I did several videos about that method. If uh, you're interested in those, I'll put a link down below and you guys can check that out. So light is number one. Number two is moisture. We do not want to let these guys dry out ever. But at the same time, we don't want these guys soaking wet. We just want them good and moist at all times. If you can do those two things, then your fall seeds, or any seeds for that matter, should germinate, but especially the fall because we still got warm temperatures right now. So they're gonna sprout up pretty quick. If you were in a colder climate and you were starting inside, uh, you could use a heat mat and that would speed things up for you, which I will do for the summer and for the spring and summer garden because when I start seeds then, it'll be February and the temperatures will be not quite hot enough for our seeds to germinate efficiently. And guys, what I will do is, is I will write a blog. This will be a written blog on the instructions on what I did today and post it on our blog section on our website, which is www.coghillfarm.com. If you look at the top or in the menu, you'll see our blog section. And I've written several blogs already. That way it'd be a lot easier for you guys to reference back to that versus trying to find this video. Well, all right, y'all, this is our fall garden this year. Doesn't look like much, really, but that's 600 plants right there, plus our radishes and carrots that we're gonna plant. So all in all, it's gonna be a pretty big garden. But at the same time, I'm growing things that are easy and this stuff will, uh, you can grow pretty close together so it won't be so spread out. So it's not gonna take up that much room, honestly. Super excited.